In preceding programs, I have been discussing the controversy between geocentrism and heliocentrism. The former holds the earth to be immobile, that it neither turns nor orbits the sun. The latter maintains that the earth rotates once a day and orbits the sun once a year. It is only after one compares the two systems in their historical context that we can appreciate how revolutionary were the ideas of Copernicus and Galileo. Nicholas Copernicus' dates were 1473 to 1543. Those of Galileo Galilei, 1564 to 1642. Again, I quote the Jewish scholar Amnon Goldberg, whose observations I referred to you the last program. The Copernican heresy, he writes, so thoroughly reversed man's view of the cosmos, the social order, and hierarchy of moral values, that it was as if a new species of being had arisen. No doctrine has had a more pernicious influence on the human spirit. The English, French, and American revolutions stemmed from it, and it paved the way for Darwinism, Marxism, Nietzsche, atheistic existentialism, and Albert Einstein. Many wax lyrical of the beauty, truth, and elegance of Einstein's theory of relativity and his suggestion that all motion is relative, and that there are no absolute terms of reference whatsoever. But the idea is now being shown to be inconsistent, contradictory, and riddled with anomalies. The more honest savants of the universe state their position thus. The earth is indeed the center of the universe, the arrangement of quasars on spherical shells is only with respect to the earth. These shells would disappear if viewed from anywhere else. This means that the cosmological or heliocentric principle will have to go. Also, it implies that a coordinate system fixed to the truth is the preferred frame of reference in the universe. Consequently, both the special and general theory of relativity must be abandoned for cosmological purposes. The doctrine of heliocentrism, for it is nothing less than that for practically everyone, a doctrine which it were blasphemous and psychotic to question, and its application in Einstein's theory has led to the current craze of moral relativism, the attitude that there are no moral absolutes, which results in anarchism, hedonism, despair, and meaningless, mechanistic, impersonal materialism, to say nothing of uncontrollable crime. Allow me to interrupt Mr. Goldberg and to expand this idea by quoting Professor James Forsey. Twentieth-century man may think that it is of no importance whatever whether the sun or the earth was proved to be the center of the universe, but it was then, and it is now. History has verified this. To understand the fact, one must seek to study history on its own terms, and in the context of that era. Before the Galileo heresy, the Christian, as opposed to the progressive man, was not only geocentric, but theocentric, that is, God-centered. Before the earth movers arrived on the scene, Western civilization had an orderly world view. Everything had its place. First of all, Man believed in God, the creator of heaven and earth, and in his holy mother, the Church. He also believed that God sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to the center of the universe, the motionless earth, in order to redeem man, 
and, contrary to his worldly 20th century counterpart, man yearned for heaven where God reigned. The only means of enjoying his beatific vision was through Christ's church. Everything bespoke unity. Man knew the importance of the church and the necessity of belonging to her. He may have belonged to a certain manor, a certain town, a certain guild, and so on. But the chain of command was virtually unbroken. If he were a vassal, he would be answerable to his lord, and in turn, the lord would be answerable to the king, the king answerable to the pope, primarily in moral matters. And all these were answerable to God. In short, man knew where he stood. All was orderly, all was secure. Man believed, and he belonged. Then with the new world view came doubt, the enemy of faith. As the famous English poet John Donne so aptly bemoaned, and new philosophy calls all in doubt. Man, now displaced from the center of the universe, not only sustained a loss of dignity, purpose, direction, but also he was most tragically, psychologically divorced from God, the all-unifying Creator. This is why this controversy is so crucial. Close quotations. To this observation I add my own. Let us grant that the abandonment of geocentrism for heliocentrism was a symptom, not the cause of Catholic societies becoming unmoored and adrift. But it was a grievous system of that society's susceptibility to total subversion and revolution. The movement and spirit and those human forces which defended and promoted Galileo as a great scientist and a martyr of the Catholic Church, and Copernicanism as a genuine scientific discovery, have carried their cause forward a long way since the 17th century. For by now, practically every institution has been either completely destroyed or woefully transmogrified, with the result that that which was referred to as Christendom no longer exists. There is hardly a nation which can be called Christian. In the popular mind, the order and discipline of the Catholic world is something dark, dreadful, and despotic. By now there is nothing which is not considered subject to redefinition and reconstruction. Indeed, according to the prevailing mentality, it is not permissible to consider that anything should not by its very nature be evolving to something different, and without question every change is an improvement. 